went to work, thought he'd dropped his children off, worked throughout the day, went to pick his children up, and discovered that they were not in the daycare center, that he'd left them in the car. Uh, at that point, everything was done medically that could, could have been done, but it, it was too late. Um, everybody that was involved in this case has been touched by it. Um, the coroner's office, the EMS workers, the dispatchers, our deputies have all went through counseling. Uh, this is something that that will get you as a parent. You don't even have to be a parent um, for something like this to emotionally have an impact on you and, and your heart and your life. And so we've, we've addressed that with our people and those with other agencies that's been involved in it. Um, I just, it's, it's, it's tragic, it's tragic. It's a, it's a parent's worst nightmare. It's also a community's worst nightmare too because so many people um, cared about these two young people, two boys, even though they didn't know them. But just the fact that they were 20 month old twins whose life was in front of them and that they tragically was taken from them. Um, I know a lot of people will see this tonight or today and read about it. A lot of people believe in the power of prayer. I just ask people to pray. <coughs> just pray for this family. This, this family needs prayer. Um, their life will never be the same. Um, I just, nothing's going to replace these two boys. Nothing's going to take away the pain that this family's going to feel, particularly the father. So I just ask this community just to lift them up in, in prayer. Um, not going to go into details of the investigation. I'll just tell you we did everything. That, there's nothing that we did not check or look into or verify. It's just a horrible, tragic accident that occurred. Um, and the solicitor's office, looked, again, looked at the facts. They're the ones who make the determination. We present the facts to them, and they decide if it's been criminal intent and somebody needs to be arrested. And their decision was made that no one should be charged. Have the coroner with us um, also this morning. Answer any questions you have. When did the father realize that they were in the back of the car and had passed away? Was that after he had gone into the daycare on return? Yeah, he actually went into daycare to pick them up just like he normally does every day. Uh, and they said they're not there. And he looked for them and they're not there. And that's when he went back to the car and found them. And, uh, did some things then that he could do to try to save them, but it, at that point it was too late. And was it his job to normally drop the two twins off? I don't, I don't know if he not normally does it every day, but that was his day, was that morning to drop them off. Will you be releasing or are you protecting the um, identity of the father? Well, I think the press release is going to give you the name of the two young boys, so you can figure it out from there. Sheriff, I don't want to try to have you identify this man anymore, but can you give a little more details on what kind of work he did or what kind of pressure he was under? I suspect when people hear this today, they'll be like, well, what could that be exactly? He was a professional. He worked in a, in a manufacturing plant that we have here in Richland County, and there were some things going on at work, um, not your normal work activity, just some things that was going on that he was dealing with at work. And... Um, that contributed to it. Um, I'm not can't say it caused it. It contributed to it. Again, those are parents. You know, balancing work and being a parent is is a balance. And unfortunately, sometimes the the work takes over your personal stuff on what you should be focusing on. And I think that's what happened today. It didn't happen on purpose. Didn't mean to do it. God, he didn't mean to do it. He's got to live with that the rest of his life. Um, but it, it, it happened. Okay, Connor, anything? Thank you, Sheriff Lott. And for the work that the Richland County Sheriff's Department did in investigating this case, it certainly was one of those ones that sticks with you uh, because you just want to know what happened. And unfortunately, on this day, this father uh, just made a terrible mistake. It was an accident. We have ruled it an accident in terms of the manner of death. The cause of death uh, will be listed as hyperthermia, um, which we said in our first press conference. 
And so we just want uh, the community to band together and pray for this family. I cannot tell you the hundreds of phone calls that I've received from community members that know uh, this family, that have spoken with them, that are praying for them, that are trying to help them through this tragedy. Um, and so we ask each of you today, anyone watching, to just send up your prayers. Um, if you have a vehicle that has the rear seat reminder, set it. Turn it on. Um, a lot of times we turn off that little aggravating noise in the newer vehicles. I know the Tahoes that we drive have them, and I always wondered what it was for. And it wasn't until this case that I realized it was a reminder to look in the back seat. So we urge each parent. There are so many stressors with COVID-19, with with just the world changing, look in the back seat. Make sure that you've dropped off the children. For every child care center, baby center, caregiver out there, we urge you, if the child does not show up, call the family. It's a, it's a, it could save a life. And so we just want to thank, uh, on behalf of the coroner's office, the Richland County Sheriff's Department for working so diligently with us on this um, and as I said before, if this was an accident, we pray that this family one day finds peace. Um, and so there's no justice to be sought here, just, um, just prayers. So thank you guys so much. Do you have any questions? I have a quick question. I know it's you know, not summer, but it's still pretty hot outside. About how long can it take for some tragedy like this to happen? You have to think when you have a, the normal body temperature is 98.6. And so when you start going above that, even a fever of 105, 104 can cause febrile seizures and death. And so you have to think that the heat index in that car was 120 degrees um, at its maximum from what we believe. And so it didn't take long. Just it, to confirm, um, the father never uh, went to the daycare in the morning on the way to work. He never stopped there and went straight to work, correct? That's what we believe the timeline to be. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Where, where was his, his work in relation to the Big Bear Ibis? Was that in, in Columbia or was that in that area? It was close in that area. All right, thank you. Thank you.